Hello guys, welcome to the video, hope you all are well, welcome to the video. Okay guys, today build video guide is for the Wish Starter class for patch 269, this is the GR solo push meta, okay, so the best build setup you can do for pushing with the spirit bra said, Madugu's Regalia, okay, it's fantastic. Uh, guys, we did receive a small nerf last patch, but don't worry, we only lost about 3 GR levels, 3 to 4 GR levels at max, man, so... Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor is still performing extremely well. Extremely well. For those who don't know, the set bonuses. Right, let's quickly go through this, guys. Two set bonus. Big Band Voodoo now follows you and lasts twice as long. Okay, so cast this. They'll follow you around now, guys, provided your buffs. And as you go from map to map, boom, it's going to follow you into each zone as well. So it's very, very good. Also, guys, on this current setup, you can have this bonus up all the time. All the time, man, as well, because we've got a cool reduction. Go, go, in right there. Brilliant. Four set bonus, gain a 60% damage reduction for 30 seconds when you enter the Spirit Realm. The Spirit Realm is basically this skill here, Spirit Walk. Okay, cast this and bang, you're going to get yourself your damage reduction here the last 30 seconds. Keep this up all the time, otherwise you'll probably die. <laughs> Love it. Okay, uh, six piece bonus, guys. Spirit Barrage deals 20,000% increased damage plus an additional percentage equal to five times your mana regeneration. Okay, so you get 20k flat, but if you've got any mana regen in your suit, in which in this build we do, because we're using Rush of Essence, Rush of Essence gives us 100 mana over 10 seconds. Okay, so you keep your power up as well. So as you're spamming like this, you're generating pretty much infinite power, and that's proccing your six piece bonus. The faster your attack speed, the more power. More DPS you're going to get from mana for Rush of Essence, okay? That's why some people use uh, Pain and Heart, some people use Dog Rock. We'll go over that in a bit. Lovely. So, yeah, guys, it's all about the Nukin, baby. The Nukin. Bang, bang, bang. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, man. But basically, guys, these spirits here will explode. So, basically, you can have three spirits out at max, okay? One, two, three. Okay? These guys last 10 seconds. But when you recast, it'll get rid of one of them there, and it'll make them basically explode. So basically, you just want to hold down the trigger when you leap packs and stuff like that. Just go bang, 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 just keep exploding all the time. And the little guy above us here, guys, is the Manitou, this rune here. Now, the Manitou will automatically track an enemy roughly roughly about 20 yards, but about 20 yards. So if we go to this door over here, you'll see that it'll zap out and hit that target. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. Now, the, th the brilliant thing about Manitou is when it accumulates the HP, the target's HP, it will kill it outright, okay? Which is fantastic. <laughs> so uh, I've got some footage coming up in a minute, actually, on a GR120 test video, just like a little test video for you guys to have a little watch to see how it works. But um, I roughly kill um, the big golem guy, roughly about ha half of his HP left. So Manitou is fantastic, man. It's really, really good. It's a really nice way of just killing off a single target pretty quickly. Just keep near it, because you want it to be hitting that one target all the time. It won't hit multiple targets. Nice. Alright guys, let's go through the gear. Of course, Sacred Halves, the guys. Wish Doctor Builds always need Sacred Halves though, to go super deep into GR. Sacred Halves gives you basically 10 Soul Harvest things, okay? With uh, Soul Harvest, yeah, we're using language for the Armor Rune. And then you couple that with Lakumba's Ornament, and bam, it gives you a huge 60% damage reduction. And it is super, super, super tanky, man. You see, you actually got a lot of tank on this build. It's good. As usual, guys, got all sacred, man. <laughs> off family, guys, of course, is the Gaze of the Mize, key to the build. Uh, Spirit Barrage gains the Phantasm Room, which is these little dudes here. That's why we're getting these three guys here. Um, lasts us twice as long, which is 10 seconds. Increase the damage of Spirit Barrage up to 150, and also increase the attack rate of the Manitou Spectres as well. Okay, so as you can see now, the Manatee guy's not really doing that much. Cast once. A little bit faster, cast twice, a little bit faster. And now I cast three times, it's going crazy. But don't worry, guys, in this build, you're going to be constantly looking all the time, so you don't worry after that. Him running out of uh, cast speed, okay? Goes up to 150. Brilliant. Okay, guys, first ring, of course, is Ring of Royal Grandeur. This gives you one set bonus, okay? So uh, you only have to wear these pieces here for the Madugas, okay? Just these pieces here, and that way you achieve six piece bonus. First gem we're using, guys, of course, is Bane the Trap, just for the massive damage. Increase with it as usual, man. Nice. Next, next gem, guys, you want to use is Gogok or Swiftness. Okay, Gogok or Swiftness it gives you basically a 15% attack speed buff, which is absolutely fantastic. It gives you dodge as well. And uh, when man when you're running past mobs as well, Man and Two would keep this buff up. You have a bifark on here, and it will always keep it up as well. But what's, what's more important, though, guys, it actually gives you cooldown as well. Okay, you get 15% cooldown out of this gem as well, and that helps you keep. Big Bad Voodoo up, you're always going to have an extra 15% attack speed as well. 
So you're going to be nuking super hard, and you get dodge as well. Now earlier we talked about another gem choice. You can use Pain Enhancer if, instead if you want to. If you're new to the build, definitely go with Gogok first, because it's just a slightly easier option. Because um, the way that this build works is, the more mobs that are on that target, say Tyrael here is a Rift Guardian, or an Elite Pack, yeah? If he's just by himself, and you're just nuking like this, the explosion damage for the Barber in the cube ain't going to do that much damage. But if he's got an ad next to him, like this guy here, maybe, you know, we're going to pull loads of mobs into one spot. Hopefully you get a Rift Guardian, basically, with that summon's ad, like Hamlin, Satris, people like that. Then when you cast onto that onto the Rift Guardian with all the ads around it, the explosion damage is massive. So you really, really want to have a Rift Guardian that has a lot of ads, so you can bring it down super quick, okay? Now, if you have a Rift Guardian that has loads of ads, then obviously Pain Enhancer is going to be absolutely disgustingly good, because... Gain Blood Frenzy, grind 3% increase attack speed for each bleeding enemy within 20 yards, okay? So you have, if you have this on, and you get Hamlin, you're going to absolutely shred him into the ground, like super quick. But if you get Rift Guard and it has no adds, then that's when Gogok comes in. Gogok, you're always going to have that 15% attack speed up all the time. You're always going to have that cooldown reduction stack up all the time as well, and a chance to dodge, which will keep you alive. So um, with Gogok, basically... It doesn't matter which Rift Guard you get, you're going to kill it quick regardless, you know, especially if it has no adds. Where Pain Hearts, though, is more for the dream of having Hamlin or Sanctuary, you know, something like that. Any Rift Guard that summons a ton of adds to get this to proc like crazy and torture it down super, super quick. So it's up to you, basically. Personally, I actually like the Gogoth more. Personally, I like the Gogoth more, personally, but right now, I think the top clear is actually using Pain Hearts. If you get that dream Rift, then dream, uh, <laughs> dream Rift Guardian, man. Nice. Okay, guys, next ring course is Compass Rose, the Endless Walk set, with the apparent with the Amulet here, Traveler's Pledge. Uh, when you stand still, you get basically 100% damage multiplication bonus, and while you move, you get 50% damage reduction as well. So it's just such a great set. Pretty much key to most solo builds, especially on the dock at the moment. It's great, man. Uh, next gem, guys, you want to, of course, use is the uh, Bane of the Stricken. Without this, you can't kill the Ref Guardian. Okay, increases the damage more and more and more onto the RG. And eventually, it'll just get wrecked. 25% increase on the increasement per level. My current gems, guys, are 130, 129, and 118. So, in today's game, very, very average these days, man. But already done, I think it was 128. Yeah, I've done 120. I'm currently ranked 69 at the moment. I did that at 1.6 par K Paragon. Not too bad for an old man. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, guys, rest of the gear, man. So, uh, yeah, you want to be using Captain Crimson's. Captain Crimson is absolutely key to this build. It's absolutely fantastic. I need to roll that armor up, actually. It's really low. Uh, Captain Crimson, guys. Okay, so uh, let's read this out. Regenerate 6,000 life per second, so it keeps you alive. Reduces cooldown of all skills by 20%. Fantastic. So, like BBB, things like that. Spirit Walk, Nado, and I like to drag stuff in. Great. Reduce all resource costs by 20%, so you don't cast as much, don't have to use as much mana. Which is fantastic. Then, free set bonus. Damage dealt is increased by your percentage of cooldown reduction. So, the more cooldown you have, the more damage you do with Captain Crimson. That's why Gogok is really, really nice, because you get always get 15% there. So make sure you've got cooldown reduction rolls, guys, on your gear, like your gloves, your shoulders, man, your weapon. Man, this weapon sucks. I need to get a new one. So it makes you do as much damage as possible. Now, if you read the second part down the bottom here, damage taken is reduced by your percentage of cost reduction, okay? So the more resource cost reduction you have, the less damage you take. So I was super lucky with these shoulders here. Cooldown and resource cost reduction. And uh, it would make you take a lot less damage, a lot less damage. Also, Blood Ritual, guys, gives you 20% cost reduction as well. Which is fantastic. Don't worry about the paid in life thing, it doesn't touch you. But um, yeah, basically, Blood Rush gives you an extra 20% resource cost reduction as well. And it makes you super tanky, like crazy tanky, man. I love it. When I normally push on softcore, I never use self res. Okay, but if you're playing hardcore, guys, we can do You can just switch this back over to Spirit Vessel and play this standard way. But I really like playing like this tank mode because it's just so much fun. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant, man. Boom, boom, boom. So if we go over to my snatch sheet here now quickly. Resources, you go, look, mana cost reduction, 47%. Less damage I'm going to be taking because of resource cost reduction and because of Crimson's as well. It's brilliant. Makes you so, so tanky, man. It's great. Not indestructible, but it makes doing the rifts much more bearable. But yeah, guys, if you're on hardcore, obviously don't use that. Switch over to self rest because you don't want to die, man. But if you've got softcore, then yeah, definitely go that way. Just works out a bit better in my opinion. Well, right, guys, so, uh, yeah, you'll need to use uh, red gems in your chest and your legs, guys, to give yourself more armor, because we're pushing. 
you need as much armor bonus as possible because we don't get rising armor bonus as you level up in Paragon. On an int class, you get all resistance, okay? So make sure you've got rubies or rainbows, that matters for everyone. And they give you armor bonus in your gear. Lovely. Okay, guys, for the Madugu gears parts, we are wearing uh, gloves, shoulders, helm, chest, and boots, okay? And then we've got raw care as well, of course, that gives us six piece bonus. And also, raw will give us three piece bonus here on crimsons as well, man. It just wrecks, man. It's so, so good. Right, uh, there you guys, look at the brain. Look what we went over through. Make sure you use a diamond in your helm as well, because it gives you more cooldown and more damage because of the Captain Crimson set. Brilliant. Okay, let's go over to the cube then, guys. In the cube, the barber. Instead of dealing direct damage, your spirit barrage now accumulates damage onto the target. And when you stop casting, explosive 500 damage of cube damage to all enemies within 15 yards, okay? Now, a lot of people get confused about this, guys, but don't you have to get too confused about this, yeah? Literally, just keep casting, okay? You know, you see the elite pack there, just keep casting, drag as many enemies as you can around it using your nado here, drag them in, and just keep casting. Some people like to use the pause method, okay? Now the pause method, say Kadala is uh, an elite pack or something like that you're trying to kill, the pause method is basically this, one, two, three, stop casting. Now why that target is inside the phantasms there, the damage is increasing, 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 okay? And when the, when the spirits expire, then it explodes and does the damage, okay? Now, you can force the damage to explode early just by recasting, okay? So you go one, two, three, and then every time you cast it now, you can see now the experience is exploding constantly, okay? Now, you won't get as much as doing it the pause method, but let's face it, most of the time the mobs are going to be moving around like crazy all the time anyway, so personally, just, just keep casting, guys, you know, because you can proc your life in here and stay alive and blow them up, okay? Nice. Next item is Frostburns, guys. So this replaces basically Mask of Jerem, because both those that don't know, Mask of Jerem and the Forcer no longer affects the Spirit Barrage build anymore. So the next best spirit, guys, is Frostburns, of course. It's a cold build. Cold seals increased by 20%, and it gives you a 50% chance to freeze enemies as well, which is very, very cool when you're fighting the Rift Guardian, especially, because you have a chance to freeze that sucker and stop those really, really nasty attacks in you. And the last one, guys, of course, is Ring of Emptors for the 300% increased damage bonus for either Horde or Locust Swarm. For those of you know, guys, this got patched a little while ago, and you don't need both spells at the moment, or you just need the one spell. Just need one spell. Easy. Nice. Right, so guys, skill then. So, Spirit Bomb Management, guys, Manitou, sorry. Uh, that is your main damage dealer. As the Manitou builds up onto a target, it exceeds its HP, it will kill it outright. Fantastic. Pranas, Prana Nado, guys. Uh, this is your grouping spell, gives you a damage buff as well. So, you would basically want to round up loads and loads of mobs, just like right around the screen. Say, uh, Terry here is an elite pack, you know, put, put in loads and loads of trash because you want to have as much trash as possible around that pack. Bring it to the Terrial, okay, the elite guardian or whatever. Cast Nado, all the mobs get pulled into Terrial, man. They just start nuking, baby. Bam, bam, bang. And the uh, spirit barge will start exploding because of the barber. And the elite pack will get absolutely destroyed very, very quickly, man. Very, very quickly. It's disgusting. Nice. Locust Swarm Peasants, guys. Okay, so this is how you proc your Ring of Emptors in the queue to do your big damage bonus, okay? This only lasts 8 seconds, so every 8 seconds you have to recast Pestilence to re-tag the mobs to make them take maximum damage. And also, this spell has a 100% uh, chance to spread as well, so as soon as you hit one, one mob, it's going to spread to the whole screen. So it's a very, very good way of putting loads of density to your desired target that you want to kill, them, like an Elite Pack or a Rift Guardian, etc, etc. But you remember, every 8 seconds you have to recast it, otherwise you'll lose 300% damage bonus. Soul Harvest, guys, key to the build, it gives you intelligence and armor bonus. We get 10 stacks of armor because of the Sacred Harbor. So interaction there on the uh, legendary piece there. Brilliant. Spirit Walk Severance. Okay, guys, now personally, I prefer Severance because I like the movement speed. Okay? Press Severance, man, you get the movement speed, and that's a uh, hunky dory, yeah? But what you can do, you can change this over to Jaunt. Now, Jaunt will give you an extra, basically, a few more seconds. It gives you one more second extra on top, which is very, very nice. Yeah, you hit this. And you're completely immune damage for three seconds. And when you're pushing, three seconds is a long time, guys, with nasty effects going off like arcane, frozen, things like that. But I've, I'm personally, I've just grown so accustomed to using Severance now that I just prefer using Severance. But it's up to you. Use what you like, but I really do. If you're new, definitely use Jaunt, man, because you get one second of uh, extra immunity. But I just like Severance because I like to, like, Zap to the corner of the screen, grab a load of a mobs like that quickly, then come back again, sort of thing. And once you've got your cooldown going, this is recharging so quick. So, for me, I like to zap around the map a bit, then pull loads of mobs to a target just to bring them in. 
but it's up to you, man. Use what you, each, each way you want to use. Okay, guys, next up is Big Bad Voodoo, of course. Guys, Big Bad Voodoo, man. Uh, lasts for 20 seconds, but it's doubled down because of the snap bonus and gives you an extra 50% movement speed and attack speed as well, which is great. Uh, on Ghost Trans, guys, you basically heal for 5% of your maximum life per second and reduces all incoming damage by 20%. If you want to go to Class Cannon, of course, you can go for Slam Dance. But, guys, for this sort of, this sort of push in build, you need to be using Ghost Trance, because this is your main recovery. This is basically how you heal your character. Okay. Alright, now I've got 780. I, I kind of like having quite high HP, so what I've done is personally, I've put a little bit of Vitality into Paragon. So I, li I like to be above 750 when I push personally, but it's up to you, you know. You can always just dump it out and just go full glass, man, just dump it into Intel, but for me personally, I like to re I like to be about 750, okay. Just that way, the uh, Ritual will heal you more per tick if you've got high HP. Lovely. Okay, guys, for passives, uh, Conjuring Ritual, baby. 25% additional damage within 20 yards. 20 yards is roughly the range of Manitou. Okay, now you see where Manitou's falling off? It's, it's roughly about that. So when you fight targets, be within 20 yards. Oh, if you're outside that, then you're not going to be doing your full DPS. Grave Injustice, guys, absolutely key to the build. And it also keeps you alive as well. Every time you kill a monster within 20 yards, you basically gain 1% of your maximum life and mana per mob. Okay, it's actually killing tons of trash, man. All your health, and don't worry about your mate. You might as well be unlimited anyway because of Rush, but it's going to heal you and provide you very, very important cooldowns on your character. Absolutely key. Rush of Essence, guys, of course, key to the build as well. Gives you basically infinite mana, like we said earlier. Rush of Essence scales with attack speed really, really well. So when you're using Gogok, the extra 50% attack speed here, or if you use Pain and Hearts, you're surrounded by a ton of enemies, and this can give you some insane attack speed. You know, when Rush of Essence goes off, it's, it's basically kicking in all that mana regen to proc your six piece bonus here, the additional equal to five times your mana regen per save for extra damage, okay? So you, overall, you'll probably get more out of it if, if you're in tons of density. With Pain of Hearts for six piece bonus with uh, Rush. But Gogok will always give you a 50% attack speed base, which is great. So it's up to you, man. But yeah, Rush versus guys, absolutely fantastic. The last of these guys for extra tank, basically, the way I like to play it is Blood Ritual, an extra 20%. Resource cost reduction, like we said earlier, to proc your Cavs Crims bonus for even more tank. But you don't have to use that, you can just switch over to Spirit Vessel and you'll be absolutely fine. But I just like the extra tank. I'm just used to playing with no self res. Okay, guys, I actually remembered this time. Follower setup. <laughs> Always forget about the follower setup. Okay, guys, I like to push with the Templar. Okay, I like to push the Templar, so I'm off going for its heal. Uh, loyalty for so more health regen, which keeps you up. Uh, stunning charge and, and onslaught ain't particularly that great, so I just do a stunning charge. Might interrupt Refugon, is really nasty attack, could save you. The last one these is uh, Guardian for the extra healing as well. If you want to proc six piece bonus, you can actually take Inspire, which gives you seven mana per second, which will give you a little bit more damage on your six piece bonus from your follower, but really it's not really that worth it. Better value just to have Guardian for that massive 180k heal. Nice. Okay, guys, on your follower gear, always a stack, attack speed, and cooldown on all pieces of gear, apart from this, obviously, because you can't roll that there. But uh, I like to use Thunder Fury, guys, okay? So, uh, trying to hit to blast your enemy with lightning, it did in damage, doesn't matter about the damage. Jumps to a nearby target, so it's basically chain light each lightning. Uh, each enemy hit has their attack speed and movement speed reduced by 30% for 3 seconds now, and it hits up to 5 targets, which is great as well. So, when you're in a massive pack of mobs, this can save you, you know, this can save you. 32% attack speed debuff is massive. Absolutely massive, man. So saving all the, say, like, Windows Assassin's just ripping you to shreds. This can actually save you. And it's great. And when you pair it with Wildwood Ring, you can actually get a stun out of it as well. Read out Wildwood Ring here. Lightning damage has up to a 35% chance to stun for 1.5 seconds. Now, when you chain up lightning, loads and loads of mobs, you're going to be stunning them and make them stop attacking you. And it helps a lot. This is especially good on the Rift Guardian. I always, if I don't, if I use a build that does not use Unity like this one here, this setup here can interrupt that Rift Guardian so much and save your ass. It's great. It's really, really good. So definitely check that out, man. Some people like to use an Azure Wrath rolled over to Lightning as well for like maximum CC, but I do think the Thunder Fury is the best bet because thirty percent debuff up to five targets every proc. It's just amazing. It's just brilliant. Of course, guys, Oculus Ring, for those who know what Oculus Ring does, a chance to create a pool, basically a pool of power, basically on the floor, up to 85%. I need to get slightly better on she runs an 83. And um, basically, as you kill a monster, you get a guaranteed yellow pool 
always runs out yellow pool because that 85% extra damage is massive when you're pushing. You can down the leap pack and a big trash pack super quick. And hopefully you get a Rift Guide that summons adds as well. So, you know, choose a, you kill one trash pack and uh, one trash mob and pops that pool. It's going to let you kill that Rift Guide even faster. So hopefully you get Hamlin, guys. Hamlin on the Sanctuary. So send the summons on that. Okay, guys. Uh, overwhelming Desire is fantastic as well. Chance on hit to charm the enemy. One that is charmed, the enemy takes 35% increased damage, man. So, say your Templar hits uh, an elite pack, charms it for a few seconds, man. Bang, you're going to do an extra 35% damage. Some people like to use uh, S of Johan Amulet for pushing, and which automatically groups enemies together on top of the Templar. But I find that with this build, because of course I've got my own group in spell, it's better not to use that. Because I think worse than you've pulled on a ton of trash on top of an elite pack, then your Templar comes along and does S of Johan Amulet proc and pulls them all off you. <laughs> and just leave the, the uh, elite pack here with the trashes on top of him. That's what I always use. Overwhelming Sire. For sure, guys, the only one really is half decent is Freezer Deflection, basically. So, uh, blocking attack has a chance to freeze the attacker for, uh, I think it's up to 1.5 seconds. Well, this one's not too bad, it's a 1.3. So, as the Templar's there, find the Rift Guardian, he might block something, and bang, Rift Guardian will be frozen for a second. And uh, it will interrupt it so you can uh, kill it. And it won't kill you, hopefully. And there you go, that's myself for the Templar. Alright, guys, so uh, let's show this in action. I've got a GR120 for you, just a mechanics video. Uh, I'm mostly all with the thing. I'm, uh, I'm missing one, two, three, four. I think I might miss about four orgs, I think. And gems are 130, 118, and 129. Right, let's show this in action, guys. Here we go, baby. Okay, guys, first and foremost, the first thing you need to do, you need to get your spirit, uh, sorry, your uh, soul harvest up as soon as possible, okay? Now, you must keep your soul harvest things up all the time. So you basically get into the rift when you see the first monster, uh, spirit walk into them and hit soul harvest. Soul harvest is within melee range as well. Okay, and if you don't have no soul harvest stacks, you will die. Okay, you will die because that's how you get all your major damage reduction in this build. Okay, so yeah, guys, just pull forward, get your tech stacks up, look for your first elite pack. You've already got one here, blood face the gorgon. Okay, you see, I've got a yellow pool there and uh. Thankfully, the rift here has some uh, generator density. Generator density is basically when a monster summons another monster. That is the sort of setup that you want when you want to push. Okay, so that way you get tons and tons of ads, and all the, you pull all those ads on top of that elite pack, and boom, and it's going to pop like that. You get your progress and move on, sort of thing. Now, right now, this is on season twenty-one trial of Tempest, man. So, right now, what I'm doing right now is I'm basically killing some trash to build up my kill counter for uh, the, the actual buff itself. I'm on 58 kills right now, so I'm building this up. So, uh, also guys, this build will work on non season as well, but on seasonal, you know, just stop to kill some uh, some trash man. And you got that, I've got 78, so the more kills you have on the season buff, the more damage you're gonna do, sort of thing. You can use that to kill targets, hopefully, a lot quicker. There we go, I've got one here now. Engage in, and torch it. Okay, guys, uh, now there is some certain effects. There you go, we've got the meteors going off. That's why I killed some trash earlier. And it's slamming the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah, look, it's already I'm mostly down already, man. Meteors OP. But yeah, those big mobs like that, they can't dodge the meteors that well. So uh, <laughs> that was uh, quite a nice time in there, actually. It was pretty cool. Nice. So, yeah, guys, um, there's certain effects, you know, elite effects, that you guys do not want on your push. Okay? And that is Juggernaut and Shield. Juggernaut and Shield are an absolute pain. An absolute pain. Like right now, I've got a juggernaut pack here. Now, if I was pushing properly, this is just a 120, so it's like a semi-speed for me now at my current power level. But um, when you're doing like deep pushes and all that, don't bother with juggernauts or mobs with shield. Okay. Preferably, you want mobs that are melee mobs as well, so they will follow you to other mobs and packs and, uh, and other uh, elites and stuff like that. Because you just want to pull as many mobs as possible together. Okay. But bang, there you go. You can kill as well. But sometimes, guys, you get to a point where you got a, an, I say, an elite pack, super injured, but there's no uh, more ads to pull to that target. Okay. Now you can just stand there, just shoot, and just cast it down. Because remember, if a uh, mana two builds up enough damage on that target, it will kill it outright eventually, sort of thing. So you, know, you can do that as well. Sometimes I still do that. You know, if there's no mobs left whatsoever, and I thought like, this guy's on like 20, 15, 20 percent or something like that. Sometimes I will sit there and just 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 hard cast him down and let Manitou do its thing and just kill him outright. 
once it exceeds its HP. Alright, here we go. Got another pack here. Nice and easy, guys. Nice and easy, man. Bang, bang, bang. I feel it's a sheer double pack. By the way, guys, Illusionist is fantastic. <laughs> Illusionist is a really, really good mod, actually, to have when you're pushing, okay? Because uh, when they split, uh, it lets your Spirit Barrage explode on that target and let you kill it even quicker. I actually really like uh, Illusionist a lot. But yeah, Shield and Juggernaut, guys. They're the ones that you do not you do not want. Obviously, Shields, self so a tree, they're part of a Shield. And you could be on your maximum damage rotation and all that sort of stuff. You do no damage to them, you know. The only exception is, though, is like sometimes when you... I don't know, say you've got a conduit or something like that. You've got a conduit, power, maybe speed, shrine, stuff like that. If it like, gives you extra damage, but then maybe stop to kill those guys, you know. But most of the time, if you've got no good shrine effect or maybe not a, you know, a ton of ads, then I would just skip them. Because by the time you've killed that juggernaut or that shield impact without the help of a shrine or anything like that, it's just going to, you're just going to not have gained that much time, or if, or if not, gain any time whatsoever. Now what I should have done there, guys, I'll just grab that conduit, man, just, just zap the first pack. What you should do, yeah, if you get conduit, search it around. Obviously this map sucks, because it's just the tunnels one. But if you're on a bigger map, like the eternal backgrounds, or the woods, or anything like that, you know, you want to be round up as many mobs, especially leak packs, as possible, before you pop that conduit or shield or power, you know, and that way you can maximize the usefulness out of that particular shrine. There you go, got loads of ads here, so I'm just building up my uh, kill count there, see the little fist there, on the buff counter there, just building that up. So we've got some uh, some extra power for the uh, the season buff. For those that guys, but those that those guys, basically the season buff scales with kills to power, okay? So the more kills you have on the counter, the harder the season buff hits. The one I like the most is actually the Lightning, because it's just so easy to, to direct on a Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor, you know? It's super, super easy, man. But yours, as we saw earlier, that could be quite good. Uh, the Snowball can be quite fun as well. It's a little bouncy snowball, it could be quite good as well. And uh, if you say you've got a Rift Guardian or a load of mobs in a corner, you can multiple bang into them and uh, absolutely destroy them super, super quick, man. Another pack here. Loads and loads of ads as well. Unfortunately, this one is a juggernaut. Now, I've got a lot of uh, ads here, and I was like, even though you can see him, look how fast he's dropping up. Because there's so many mobs around that target, straight to the other portal there, guys, with extra damage. Because there's so many targets around that juggernaut, because it's, it's making my barrage explode super, super quick. You can see that even that juggernaut now is dead. <laughs> it's fantastic. But yeah, you've got enough density, then, yeah, round them up and uh, drop them on the uh, juggies head and come. Oh look, there's the lightning. Look, it's been wasted. But thankfully, it transfers to the next map. So I see a few mobs there and just quickly uh, torch them with the lightning. I had quite a few kills as this went off, so uh tried to use it. There's a pack there. Still got a little bit of the lightning, so I used it here to kill those guys. But yeah, guys, the rotation of the build is very, very simple. Okay, so you engage the elite pack, you pull loads of mobs to the pack, you cast pestilence to your to proc your uh, ring of emptiness bonus, and then you cast Prana Nado to group all the mobs around it. And then start hard nuking. So you see your yellow pool a pop up appear, guys. Try to run to it to get that extra up to 85% damage bonus from your Oculus Ring from your follower. That guy's pretty much by himself. There, we see Manitou there just ripped out the last uh, few percentage of him because it accumulated enough damage on him. Nice man. So I've only got 28 kills now, so it's going to build this up a little bit. Boom, back up to 41. But yeah, the season buff, I think it goes off every, was it? A couple of minutes, I think. Always forget to use it half the time, though. <laughs> there we go. Got a few ads. Is that another juggernaut? It is another juggernaut. I don't know why, guys. Every time I do like a run, I just seem to get so many juggernauts, man. So many jugs. But thankfully, though, we've got a lot of ads here, so uh, the explosion damage is going to wreck this guy pretty quick. It's going down. But yeah, guys, with mana two, it will attack the closest target to you. Okay, you can see now, right now, I moved, I moved back to that guy because it's starting to zap that other trash guy, and I didn't want that. Season lightning just went off, so it's going to help me kill this dude now. And pop, and he's gone. Lovely. Rift Guardian is here. Okay, so I was really hoping for a Rift Guardian here that summons ad. This guy does summon ads, but this dude is horrible because he's got that nasty charge. Good old Stone Singer. So I was like, okay, so let's use the Geromsy to beat this guy. Okay, so I've got this little post there. And uh, I just hide behind the post. Now I know he's going to summon those little uh, little mortar pets of his soon. So I've just recast Pestilence there. Uh, it's right on top of him. 
and there's yellow pool power. Bang! Use that yellow pool, baby. Go, go, go. Got to be a little bit careful though, because this guy hits super hard in melee. Super, super hard. And then I'll hide behind that post again. So you can use this trick, guys, for certain Rift Guardians to get away from their charge attacks, like this guy here. Another pool just summoned there. I was a bit, bit apprehensive going for that one for a bit, but I got a little bit of damage out of it. Easy. So yeah guys, just make sure your big bad voodoo is up all the time as well. Mine is currently off cooldown right now, but remember, because we're using Go Gok or Swiftness, we're getting extra cooldown. And I'm going to be popping out any second now. Bang! <laughs> there you go! Rift Guardian is now. Nice little GR 120, man. And no deaths either, that was pretty good, without no self res. That's good. There you go guys, man. Quick mouse over all the gear, as usual. Most of the org, just like Lobia's orgs, man, like 110s, just stuff like pretty much solo, pretty much. But yeah, not too bad, not too bad at all, man. It's a very, very strong build, guys. And uh, don't worry, man. We got we got received a little nerf. It's only a very minor nerf, just a few levels. Couldn't matter the skills, and there you go. Love you, man. Wish not to power, boys. We're still strong as hell, man. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, there's my current Paragon setup. Just uh, 1.7k Paragon. Love it. Nice. And there you go, guys. Also, guys, uh, with this build, if you've got all ancient gear and you don't have no wargs and you've got base gems about 100, level level 100, you could probably fish 120, what we just showed there with no wargs, man. About a thousand paragon and cores are about, about 100. So that's how strong this is. It's, it's crazy, crazy strong. And there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and share this video. Also, guys, in the description of this video, there'll be a stat guide to Diablo fans. So that way, you know exactly how to roll all your gear, do some rolls. And you know exactly what skills to put in your bars and what gems to use. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Stay safe. Enjoy. Meta Solo Witch Daughter, baby. It's a beast. <laughs> Woo!